Hello all. In today's PRB video, we have something a little different. First, I will be presenting you the latest packages in the marketplace. Then John will follow with a detailed explanation of the process of submitting a package to the marketplace. He'll use his own latest submission as an example. So let's go. First package, file nav templates by John DeFish. This package offers a set of two block templates, one for the core file block and one for the core document library block. Very simply, these templates will make links to files look like links from the AutoNav block. A bullet list, you can still style however you like. This is especially interesting for a document library block that presents the file list as a table by default. This package is free in the marketplace and it's V9 ready. Our second package is RM Instagram feed by user Richmade. This package includes a simple block to present your Instagram feed as a list of images. It offers some simple but effective design options, such as single or multi-column layout, customizable colors, and rollover effects. You will need an Instagram API key for this, of course, but it also comes with a default example key for you to test. With all the changes in the Instagram API in the last few years, Instagram blocks have a tendency to break, so it's nice to have a simpler one that's up to date. This package costs $15 in the marketplace. It is for concrete V9 only and requires PHP 7. And finally, another very useful package, import users by user XB385. This package does one thing very well, it imports lists of users from a CSV file. It uses the bare minimum, email, username and password, but will make things very easy for you. It can check for existing users by email. It offers a CSV template so you know exactly how to format your file. And it will let you do a test run with the possibility to display only errors and even warn you if passwords are too weak. This package is $15 in the marketplace, and despite what it says on the page, it is for Concrete V9 and Concrete V9 only. There must be a bug in the marketplace. That's it for me, thank you, and I will uh, let John show you how to submit your packages to the marketplace. Thank you again, bye. Thank you, Noor. As we've seen, marketplace add-ons don't need to be enormous. There are many simple and uh, quite useful add-ons that are a variation of an existing block or a few block templates or uh, a convenient way of managing some embed codes for a third-party service. These are the kind of add-ons that most developers have in their cupboards and that others could benefit from. So perhaps you should think about getting some of the stuff in your cupboard into the marketplace and help others out. It's that kind of add-on is a good way to get started contributing to the marketplace and a good way of learning the process before doing anything big. What I'm going to do today is show you the process of submitting an add-on to the marketplace. The add-on is file nav templates that Noor has just reviewed. What I'm going to show you first is what the add-on looks like on my development system as files in the file manager. Here we have the way I like to organize the files for an add-on. This isn't how I develop, this is how I store it once I finish developing. So I have a directory for documents, a directory for the uncompressed add-on, and a directory for each zipped up version. One of the things that we want to do before uploading is to check that the zip contains everything that's supposed to be there and nothing isn't supposed to be there. For example, I've got a, a Photoshop version of the icon here. We certainly don't want to be uploading that. If I pop up a view of the zip. We can check through and see that I've got a couple of templates, a package controller and a PNG file for the icon. No Photoshop file. If you're a Mac user, Mac OS keeps a whole bunch of hidden dot and underscore files alongside the real files so it's easy to, for those to get into a zip so take care. And some other files to be aware of are Git, Composer, test files, that sort of thing. The add-on should be just what is needed to run it on a site, not everything that was needed to, to actually develop it. A tool that can be useful at this stage is the linter test page. I'm not going to do that here for brevity, but you can submit an add-on to the automated test system without actually submitting it to the marketplace. 
what we're going to look at is how to actually submit your code. If you click the main menu and just click extensions and then scroll down at the bottom here we have submit your code. This tells us a bit about where you can submit code and the one we're interested in is submitting an add-on or theme to the marketplace. We have now a whole lengthy page of stuff about licensing and ownership and some basic rules of submission and some guidelines about version management and uh, the structure of an add-on. So I won't go into that now. This is for you to read and you should probably read this before you're even thinking about building an add-on for the marketplace. Click your way through here, have a read of it. The important bit is right at the bottom where we get to submit your work. Now this next page is a bit cringe-worthy. It's so out of date. Just leave it at version 7 and click continue. Now we come to the real part. This is the part where you upload your add-on and it begins a process. So first automated and then a human review by the PRB. That's the peer review board. I won't bore you with me typing, cutting and pasting. So by the magic video, we'll jump forward to a completed form and then walk through that. It's an add-on, not a theme. The name of the add-on, the handle of the add-on. This needs to match the name of the zip file and the package handle. A short description. This goes in the marketplace listing and you don't want it to be too long because it'll get cropped anyway. Now we have the actual text that goes into the marketplace page and a few keywords as well as a few obvious things like that it's a template and it's for the document library and files. Most developers like to stick their name in there because that's the only way currently of finding all add-ons for a particular developer and version 9 in there because that's currently the only way for users to search for version 9 compatible add-ons in the marketplace. Uh, please don't spam the index. Now the actual add-on, uh, an example URL. You don't need to have an example URL or a screencast or screenshot but it's usually a good idea to have one. I build working examples into my documentation site for a screenshot. I've got one screenshot here so I'll actually upload it now. If you have loads of screenshots it's usually better to do this in two stages and to upload the add-on and then to come back and upload the screenshots later. Purchasing. This is going to be free. It's up to you how much you charge and whether you charge for every add-on or make every add-on free. Requirements. I'm going for a minimum of version 854. This has to match what's in the package controller as does the package version. This particular item will probably work back to 8.0, but if you do that, you've also got to be prepared to maintain and test that far back. And quite honestly, it's not worth the hassle. So 8.5.4 is a reasonable compromise between something that's fairly recent and not too onerous to manage. I'm going for the standard marketplace license. You don't actually have to add any license files to your add-on. Concrete will do that for you. If you've got any GPL component in your add-on, you might have to make the whole add-on GPL in order to maintain their licensing rules. The support stuff, I'm just going to leave that all the standard. A skill level, this is the skill needed to actually install and use the add-on, not the context in which it would be used. So this is fairly simple template. All you have to do is pick it in a block edit dialog. So it's beginner level. You need to agree to the terms and conditions and say it's in a package format. The system checks that anyway. And then add it to some categories. I've picked custom templates because that's what it is. Interface elements because that's what it is. A multimedia because that's where the document library block lives in the um, add bar. Finally, at the bottom, version history. I use this to link to a version history on my own support site, but you could put a version history in here. And that's it, ready to go. So I'll click the button and submit it for approval. And here we have a marketplace review page. The entry is created and it's now waiting to be reviewed. All these gray boxes, if we were to wait a few minutes, will uh, hopefully turn uh, to say that they passed the automated test. These are tests that are run by the linter tool. So we'll uh, refresh the page. Right, and here we are back again and you can see that everything has turned green. This means all the automated tests have passed. Now for a lot of modern code, especially if you're using PHP 7 specific language features, 
the lint is stuck back at the lowest common denominator of BHP 5 point something archaic and you could easily fail a few tests so fix what you can and upload again and if you can't pass all the tests because of something like PHP versions don't worry post a reason why down here in the message history and we'll review those uh, reasons and grant exemptions to any tests you can't pass automatically. This little bit above is a checklist for reviewers of some basic points. A clean archive with no extraneous files, a good looking marketplace page, doesn't mess up the core in any way, it uses translation properly, it installs. Then down at the bottom we actually get a review history where we start adding messages and responses. This is for you and for the reviewers to conduct a dialogue through the review process. Right, I've scrolled back to the top to show you a few other things. We have a link to the Marketplace page. You can pop that open and here is my Marketplace page with the screenshot. It's version 9 ready. From here I can click to edit the add-on and we have a page that you'll have seen before. This is the submission page or a stripped down version of it where you can edit the Marketplace text if you've got something wrong, change the keywords, add some more screenshots, change the price and a few other things. You can't change everything but important bits you can change. The other thing to see here is the section update files and compatibility. Every time you want to upload a new version this is where you go and you fill in here the new version so the next version I want would probably be 0.9.1 and I'd have to change this also in the package controller. Upload the file add a little version note, click replace the file and then I need to go down here and make sure this compatibility map for every version of Concrete 5 that I want to serve up version 0.9.1 and that's about it for Marketplace Review. At some point reviewers are going to start looking at this adding comments and then eventually the add-on will become approved and go live in the Marketplace. So is there a lot of work involved? There's certainly more work involved in getting an add-on into the marketplace than you would have spent on a single-use application. Once you've got a bit of experience with the marketplace, it's not a vast amount of work because you tend to think with that sort of level of code quality, explanation, detail uh, in the first place. You've got to remember that an add-on that works for one project will often need some work to make it work generically for other sites and fit in with the current good practice. You also need at least a minimum of documentation and really if you have a big theme or add-on in mind I would recommend submitting something simple first so you can learn the process and if you've got a bunch of simple stuff sitting on your shelf next time you've got a few minutes to spare think about adding it to the marketplace and contributing to the Concrete 5 community. That's all for this month. Thank you and see you next time.